Round 11, the newest round and the most exotic round of the championship, the Rally Indonesia. Mackinnon retired on the event last year, but knew that he was now on the verge of the 1997 driver's title. Victory would take him so much closer to that crown. <laughs> McRae also retired in 1996. His hopes of the title were slipping away and he badly needed a good result in Indonesia. This was the second event for Toyota's new Corolla, and Oriol was keen to improve on the eighth place he'd scored in Finland. The second car was driven by Australia's Neil Bates, but his rally ended after less than a day. Into lead, four and a half. Oops. Juha Kankinen nearly won the rally in 1996, and that newfound confidence in the Ford team meant that they were on the up. Sainz won the rally last year, starting as favourite, but the team hadn't done much testing. Like McRae, Kenneth Erickson was concerned about those mystery engine faults, which had cost them so many points during the year. Richard Burns had missed Finland, but he was back at number two to Mackinnon. The stifling heat and humidity were causing problems for all the teams, drivers and mechanics. You can imagine the kind of the slippery conditions meant that once again tyre choice was a major talking point. Although some drivers, though, had other reasons for their slow start. Maybe I'm driving too carefully. I don't know. You know it's, it's good to be leading, but in this condition, then it can change in one stage. That's the thing. We've just got to be really careful and make sure we get the tyre decision right. Didier Oriol was frustrated by transmission problems, which meant that he ran with two-wheel drive for most of the day. Burns had a misfire, although he was fastest on the day's last stage. For Kenneth Erickson, his problems weren't mechanical. Slip it in. Sainz had changed the suspension setup. He was much happier and fourth overall. Fastest on one of the day's stages, Kankinen was third, ahead of the team leader. Tommy Mackinnon was in second place going into stage eight. Only around eight seconds were lost, but there was more work for the Mitsubishi mechanics. <laughs> In the last stage, we, we hit the wall a little bit and broke front. Luckily, not so badly. Just the turbo pipe closed completely. McRae's domination of the rally was almost total. Fastest on five of the day stages, he led by 35 seconds. Day two began with bad news for Toyota. Oriol retired, but the reason given by the team didn't sound entirely plausible. Well, he was in stage 11, uh, Batu Honga stage, and in the middle of the stage is a village, and he saw a really nice holiday home there. So he stopped, and he's negotiating at the moment to buy that holiday home. McRae was fastest on the first two stages of the day. Then came the third. of a crest, slippy, tightens and opens, three outside. Into three right opens. Mackinnon had no idea of the dramas behind him, just as well. <laughs> to his relief, McRae right passes Mackinnon's Mitsubishi. Into slow three left. Another fan 
was broken and uh, broke the radiator and uh, water came out and uh, engine overheating and that's it. Colin McRae and Nicky Grist had problems of their own. And six left and six right over crest. Pardon? Fire. Fire. The concern showed on the faces of all the Subaru team. A stupid mistake, completely my fault. We went too quick in a slippy corner and hit a tree. And then it burst the gearbox cooler and set the car on fire and broke the radiator. So we lost a lot of time. I don't know whether we'll be able to get it going or not. Once again, the mechanics were the key to continuing. Every last ounce of energy was used to get the car going again. But it got little further. Retirement number six for McRae and Nicky Grist. That meant that Richard Burns was up to fourth after the two retirements. Kenneth Erickson was third, but at least there were no signs of those engine problems. The leader going into the day's last stage would be in second place coming out. Now that it's raining very hard, what are you going to do? Uh, go home. <laughs> Sainz was fastest on all of the last five stages of the day. No surprise that he'd overtaken Kankinen, but could this be Ford's second one-two of the year? The third and final day, six stages and a dry start to the day. Sainz began the day with a 20-second gap, but had a scare on stage 19 with suspension damage. Kankinen looked to have settled for second place, but kept up the pressure. As the cars were worked on, the relaxed drivers took on vital fluids, Kankinen even suggesting that he was doing his team leader a favour. Of course I have to push him a little bit to keep him awake, I mean, otherwise he's going to sleep. An unusual name in the championship, Proton, first in Group N and sixth overall for Karamjit Singh. Yoshio Fujimoto, fifth in the old Celica. Richard Burns was fourth, cursing that misfire on the first day. Sixty, left max over Grace. Fifty, crest of flat left minus long and flat left long. Eighty, braking, K right. Despite being fastest on the first three stages of the day, Ericsson was unable to catch the two Fords. That meant Kankinen could finish second for the third time this season. Long, medium, right and keep right to very, very long, bad left, tightens hard. And very, very long, medium, right, tightens. Sainz had recovered from the suspension scare on stage 19 to take win number two. It was a popular victory, the team now on course for both titles. I'm very pleased after the only misfortune we have in the last three, four rallies. I think it's a good victory. The 20th victory for Sainz on a World Championship event. The team's second 1-2 of the year, and a comprehensive one at that. 16 seconds between the two, with over a minute between Kankinen and third-placed Kenneth Eriksson. Tommy Mackinnon still led the Drivers' Championship despite his non-finish, eight points his lead, but in the Manufacturers' Championship, Subaru's dominance was over. One point was now all that they led Ford by. 